Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Now at 6 o'clock, Lexington firefighters are investigating a hit and run into a building. And Lexington police say two men robbed a food truck late last night. And an EKU student has died after an accident over in Madison County. We have these stories and more, plus breaking news as it happens coming up on WKYT this morning. Hey, good morning to you. It is very rainy out this December morning. I'm Whitney Wetzel. Yeah, thankful for a very good umbrella this yes. morning. Needed that in the parking lot for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're dressed like spring. Yeah. I know it's December, <laughs> but I mean, it feels like spring yeah. out there. Spring showers outside, it seems like. Mike Linden wouldn't tell us much about the forecast. He's going to tell us now, though. Let's check in with him. Well, Sean. John and Whitney, it looks like the rain is mainly only going to take place through the morning hour. Some relief is near, but it certainly doesn't look like it on this paint by number like Defender early this morning with colors all over the map. It's been some heavy rainfall almost all morning long for central Kentucky that's beginning to push eastward right now through Bourbon County. An impressive number this morning since midnight. Franklin County has seen three quarters of an inch of rain, so that is quite an impressive amount of rain in just six hours, and it looks like it really is. Going to continue on at least through the morning hours. But coming up, I'll show you what I'm tracking as far as how long this rain should stick around and what the temperatures have in store for us once this rain passes by. All right, thank you, Mike. New this morning, police and firefighters are investigating a hit and run that involved a car and a building in downtown Lexington. Yeah, it happened on South Broadway, right across the street from UK's campus. Let's go to WKYT's Mark Barber. He is live this morning from the scene. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Whitney and Sean. The property manager of this home health supply store tells me that police have made an arrest and a man is facing DUI charges after crashing into this building. Now, I want to stress again that that information is coming from the property manager. We're still waiting to hear back from police at this hour. Now, we are waiting on that report from firefighters, but we're told about 3.30 this morning, the car crashed into the front of the building here on South Broadway, knocking brick and other pieces of the front of the storefront onto the sidewalk here. Now, as for the cleanup that needs to happen out here, we're told that the damage that was caused is into the thousands of dollars here, but the property manager says that they are expected to open again on Monday. Of course, they've got a lot of work to do between then. Now, that property manager also says that firefighters have been out here at the scene checking to see if the building is stable, and we're told that they did not find any problems here. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Thank you, Mark. Also new this morning, Lexington police say they're on the lookout for two robbery suspects this morning. Police say two men robbed a food truck around 1130 last night. It happened on Colesbury Circle off New Circle Road. An employee says he was approached by two men dressed in all black carrying handguns. He says they demanded cash and then ran off. Police brought out canines but lost their trail around Hollow Creek Road. Police have a limited description of those suspects. They haven't made any arrests. New this morning, an injury crash turns deadly over in Pulaski County. Last week, we told you about a wreck that sent three people to the hospital. Now, the Fayette County coroner tells us 86-year-old Robert Hyden died from his died from injuries stemming from that crash. Deputies say Hyden was driving along Highway 1247 and tried to turn onto Highway 27. We're told he didn't see oncoming traffic and pulled into the path of another car. A crash that shut down a major road in Madison County has killed an EKU student. It happened Friday afternoon along Irvin Road in Richmond. The Madison County coroner says 22-year-old David Nelson Lee III died in that wreck. According to witnesses, he was leaving a gas station when another car hit him. Drivers say speed's a problem on this stretch of Irvin Road. And unfortunately, they say this isn't the first deadly wreck they've seen. People don't take their time and won't slow down. You know, they're getting hurry and don't care. And Police tell us no one else was injured in that crash. It was a close call caught on camera. A WKYT camera was rolling as a semi driver went around a police barricade at a crash scene in Winchester. Police say the man behind the wheel, Quincy Collier of Clay City, waited in traffic for about 30 minutes before driving through the roadblock at Lexington Avenue and Bypass Road. Crews had the road blocked because they were working to tow two cars that had crashed overnight Thursday. Winchester police say they hope this will be a, this close call will be a wake up call for reckless. Drivers. We're very lucky no one was injured, and hopefully, people will learn from this that uh, you know the blue lights are on or, or emergency lights and equipment are activated. Just take time and try to slow down and be cautious through those areas. Collier denied our request for a jailhouse interview. He's charged with reckless driving and wanton endangerment.
If you drive through Garrett County, you may have to find an alternate route home. The state has closed several bridges for repairs. The possible detours include a 12 mile drive to Kentucky 52 or a shorter drive on the narrow and curvy Perkins Lane. A spokesperson for the Transportation Cabinet told us they don't have a timeline for when repairs will be finished, but they have applied for emergency funding. People in Pulaski County can help those in need and pay off their parking fines at the same time. Those with parking tickets from Somerset can drop off food at God's Food Pantry in exchange for a voucher that's good for parking fines. It's called Food for Fines. If you donate five boxes of food, you'll get a voucher that can be redeemed at City Hall to pay for those tickets. The Food for Fines program runs through the end of December. It's cool to see that going on there. Yeah. Nice way to, to do that. All right, keeping a child's memory alive by helping others. A Lexington family has turned their home into a winter wonderland. Yeah, and they're inviting you to come see their Christmas light display on Tuscaloosa Drive. They're doing this all in honor of a child who died after battling cancer. WKYT's Carrot Weimer tells us how this unique display will help children battling illness. This home isn't hard to spot. That's because of the lights. Lots of them. Come inside, and you're walking in a winter wonderland in memory of a young girl who lost her life to cancer. But her legacy still lasts today. And what Jillian taught me was to have joy in the moment no matter what's going on in your life. And while I watched this little girl battle um, an important part of her life, she had joy right until the end. That's why they deck these halls. The Burweilers say this is all about more than just all these lights and decorations. They say it's about bringing joy and putting smiles on people's faces. But we all see, um, I'm going to try not to get emotional, but the pain in the world. And there is so much joy, and there's so many people doing so many great things. And I think that there is no greater joy than giving to somebody else and blessing somebody else. And when people come through our house, they feel that, they sense that. Look under the tree, and Santa Claus has already come to town. These are the toys they're collecting for UK Children's Hospital. These children are stronger and braver than we'll ever have to be. And so people tell us all the time, oh, this is such hard work. I tell everybody it's a lot of work, but it's not hard work. With every light, every display, <laughs> and every smile, doing what they can to spread joy to the world. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Jillian's Joy Box will host two more open houses next Friday and then the week after that. You can find more information on WKYT.com. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Now at 6.30, Lexington firefighters are investigating a hit and run into a building. And Lexington police say two men robbed a food truck late last night. And an EKU student has died after an accident in Madison County. We have these stories and more, plus breaking news as it happens coming up on WKYT this morning. Good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Whitney Wetzel. I'm Sean Moody. A rainy, rainy Saturday. We heard it on the roof just a few yeah. minutes ago. It's coming down. And it, I saw it whenever I came into work, so it really has not stopped. Mm -mm, not at all. Let's check in first in our first alert weather center with Mike Linden. Mike, how's it looking? Well, it's looking quite promising as we head into the afternoon, but you'll still need one of these. You'll want to hang on to that umbrella at least through the morning hours here as the moderate to light rainfall continues on for most of central Kentucky. It's pretty much following 64 right now and pushing eastward into Moorhead, but nonetheless, Fayette County still seeing some of that light to moderate rainfall. In fact, most of Kentucky seeing that this morning. Hazard a bit of a break right now, but should pick up most of that rain a little bit later on. Now, currently, here are our temperatures, and this will be our high temperature for the day. You're seeing 56 degrees right now in Lexington. It's pretty much it as we push forward into the middle of our day today. As the warm air heads out of the region, well, things are really going to improve. But the focus of the forecast coming up that I'll break down for you is the fact that this heavy rain will continue through the morning, but behind it, some big changes to our temperatures will arrive into Sunday. I'll have that all for you in about 10 minutes. All right, thank you, Mike. New this morning, police and firefighters are investigating a hit and run versus a uh, building in downtown Lexington. It happened on South Broadway, right across the street from UK's campus. Let's go to WKYT's Mark Barber. He is live this morning at the scene. Good morning, Mark. 
Good morning, Whitney and Sean. <laughs> Firefighters say about two hours ago, the car slammed into the home health supply store here on South Broadway. If you look over my shoulder here, you can see where the force of the crash knocked the bricks off the building and onto the sidewalk here. Now, police are telling me that they arrested the driver of this Seve Chevrolet who plowed into the building. Now, police say at this point they are not able to release that driver's name. Now, police are also saying that they don't have any word at this time of what may have caused this crash. Now, the property manager of the building here tells me that firefighters were out here this morning checking to see if the building is stable. She tells me they didn't find any problems. Now, as for the cleanup that needs to happen out here, this property manager says that the crash caused thousands of dollars in damage. She tells me that there's a lot of work to be done here, but she says they have started the cleanup efforts and they hope to be open by Monday. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you. New this morning, Lexington police say they're on the lookout for two robbery suspects. Police say two men robbed a food truck at around 11.30 last night. It happened on Colesbury Circle off New Circle Road. An employee said he was approached by two men dressed in all black with handguns. He says they demanded cash and then ran off. Police brought out their canines, but they say they lost the trail around Hollow Creek Road. They have a limited description of the suspects. They have not made any arrests. An injury crash has turned deadly in Pulaski County. Last week, we first told you about a wreck that sent three people to the hospital. Now, the Fayette County Coroner tells us 86 year old Robert Hyden died from injuries stemming from that crash. Deputies say Hyden was driving along Highway 1247 and tried to turn onto Highway 27, but we're told Hyden didn't see oncoming traffic and pulled into the path of another car. Eastern Kentucky University students lost one of their own after a deadly crash that shut down a busy Madison County road for hours. The three vehicle crash happened late Friday afternoon along Urban Road in Richmond. Investigators tell us the crash killed an EKU student. People who often drive on that road say this shows just how dangerous it can really be. WKYT's Kristen Kennedy has more. Clerks inside the Ready Mart on Irvin Road heard the first wreck. I looked out the window and I saw that white car hit the van. And saw the second. That white car hit the driver's side door of that van. How, I don't know. It looked like, kind of looked like that van was already sideways in the turning lane and he was pulling out and hit him. The Madison County Coroner says 22 year old David Nelson Lee III, an EKU student, died in that wreck. Lee lived in Irvin. Michael Pellini says he was leaving the gas station when another car hit him. It seems like the worse the weather gets, the less sense people have on the road. Drivers tell us speed is a problem on this stretch of Irvin Road, and unfortunately, this isn't the first deadly wreck they've seen. People don't take their time and won't slow down. You know, they're getting hurry and don't care. And Stephen Williams Jr. takes Irvin Road to and from his job five days a week. Williams works at the same university Lee attended. It hit, it'll hit hard tomorrow. People know him probably up there and students go to school up there. And it's sad. It's such a young life. In Richmond, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Crews in Madison County were also busy working a crash involving a school bus. A Madison County school spokeswoman says the bus clipped a utility pole at 3rd and Water Streets in Richmond and knocked down electrical wires. There were 31 children, a driver, and an aide on board. None of them were hurt. The bus was able to leave a short time after fire crews arrived. It was a close call caught on camera that police say put drivers and officers at risk. WKYT's camera caught a trucker going around a police barricade. Take a look at this video here. Police had the road blocked because they were working to tow two cars that had crashed overnight. Police say Quincy Collier of Clay County was the man behind the wheel. He, they say he waited about 30 minutes before he drove through the roadblock. Winchester police say they hope this will be a close call. Uh, this, they hope this close call will be a wake up call for reckless drivers. We're very lucky no one was injured, and hopefully people will learn from this that, uh, you know, the blue lights are on or, or emergency lights and equipment are activated. Just take time and try to slow down and be cautious through those areas. A collier denied our request for an interview with the jail. He's charged with reckless driving and wanton endangerment. He's set to be arraigned on Monday. People driving through Garrett County may have to find an alternate route home. The state closed several bridges for repairs. As WKYT's Victor Puente tells us, people say the unexpected closure is an inconvenience. The sign behind me first appeared on Monday, catching some people who live on Fall Lake Road off guard. They say this closure has added about 40 minutes to their commute. 
Three bridges on Fall Lake Road have been targeted by the state for repairs. The first is about two miles from downtown Lancaster, but only half a mile from George McClure's farm. Well, I'm going to go about four miles out of my way and ain't about a half a mile where I got to go to. His trip to feed his horses isn't the only thing that's going to take longer. My neighbors work in Lexington. It's added 20 minutes to their commute. I'm not sure how much it's added to the, uh, to the bus route. The possible detours include a 12-mile drive around Kentucky 52 or a shorter drive on the narrow and curvy Perkins Lane. Well, there have been two wrecks, two serious wrecks on that road since because it is one lane and it's congested and there's no shoulders. The two bridges that are still open have had their weight capacity drop down to three tons. One man who owns a garage on this road told us that means some of the trucks he services aren't able to get to him, costing him business. The people who live here hope a solution can be found before those repairs are made. No warning, no preparations you could make. It's been a surprise to the county. A spokesperson for the state transportation cabinet told me they don't have a timeline for when the repairs on these bridges will be finished, but she said they have applied for emergency funding to get the job done. In Garrett County, Victor Puente, WKYT. Officials at the bus garage say the closure has added about 20 minutes to their routes along Fall Lake Road, but they are dealing with it. Meanwhile, two people are behind bars this morning after police say they caught a central Kentucky couple in a hotel room with a missing 15 year old girl. Berea police charged Jordan Palmer and Andrea Baker with unlawful transaction with a minor. Palmer also faces a rape charge, and Baker is charged with sex abuse. Police say they discovered the pair in a room in the Knights Inn with a girl who ran away. In addition to the sex crimes, police say the pair gave the teen meth. Police think two pricey thefts near Transylvania University could be connected. Sunday morning, maintenance crews at apartments on 4th Street near campus discovered parts had been stolen from several air conditioning units. Just behind the apartment complex, three batteries to construction equipment were stolen earlier that week. Campus police say the two separate thefts are most likely related. A lot of uh... Your criminals are looking at uh, selling aluminum, uh, copper wire, and these types of things, and it's, uh, they do more damage than they actually do uh, uh, get in reference to monetary value. A police said the damage to both the air conditioning units and the construction equipment is more than $6,000. Officials hope to use this winter break to fix a potentially dangerous problem at a Lexington school. They detected high levels of radon at the Locust Trace AgriScience Center on Leestown Road. During winter break, radon mitigation systems will be installed to continue reducing those levels. The school board needs to sign off on $50,000 worth of work to remove the radon. That vote is expected to happen on December 15th. In some areas of the building, it's fine. It's just that it seems to be in pockets, and I think that's probably how radon typically manifests. We just want to be sure that we are being extra cautious and taking care of the issue now and uh, seeing that for the long term that we have a healthy building. School leaders will continue to monitor radon levels for 90 days after the mitigation system is installed. A Lexington family has turned their home into a winter wonderland, and they're inviting you to come see their Christmas light display on Tuscaloosa Drive. They're doing it in honor of a child who died after battling cancer. The owners say it's about more than just lights and decorations. They're also collecting toys for UK Children's Hospital. They want to keep a child's memory alive by helping others. These children are stronger and braver than we'll ever have to be. And so people tell us all the time, oh, this is such hard work. I tell everybody it's a lot of work, but it's not hard work. Jillian's Joy Box will host two more open houses next Friday and the week after that. You can find more information on WKYT.com. Definitely.